Oh, yeah! Connecting to the internet! No one makes a fool out of me! Get a load of this! There's only one real Sonic! Hey everyone, Nux here. We are back with the next episode of Sonic Characterization. Now, we looked at many comments with our last video, and the majority vote was none other than the ultimate life form himself, Shadow the Hedgehog. Many would argue that we should use sources such as Straw Poll, but we will do that later when we feel we have eliminated the top votes. But anyway, let us begin. So, who is Shadow the Hedgehog? Is he a big piece of the main cast? He doesn't date as far back as a character like Knuckles, but he still has a pretty big importance to the events of the games overall. Shadow is a mysterious black hedgehog who is impersonating Sonic. His story acts very clouded in the beginning. So where is his start? Sonic Adventure 2, one of the biggest points in the franchise's history, story-wise. Shadow is introduced as a rival to Sonic, acting as a sort of evil clone type character to him. But he ends up being more than that. The characters of the dark story in Sonic Adventure 2 were made to reflect our heroes of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, but Shadow goes deeper beyond that. Shadow was created as the ultimate life form by Gerald Robotnik. As the ultimate life form, Shadow was ageless and immune to all diseases. Originally, it was Gerald's attempt to develop a cure for his ill granddaughter, Maria. But after gun soldiers killed Maria, Gerald went insane. Gerald Robotnik edited Shadow's memory to make him do the task he performed in Sonic Adventure 2. Shadow remembers what happened on the arc, but mainly Maria's death. One thing that some would mistake is that Shadow did it because he was evil and trying to be the bad guy. But really, from his perspective, he had no choice. He knew Maria as a sweet girl who had an influence on his understanding of the world. We know that Shadow was a friend to this little innocent girl. That would mean that Shadow is no evil character. He only temporarily crowded out her influence on his reasoning after the shock of seeing her dying. That along with Gerald's manipulation set Shadow on the path for revenge which was originally Gerald's own revenge. But Shadow also got emotionally invested in this revenge. Can you really blame him? He was barely born, and according to um, some Japanese strategy guides, it states he was barely even a week old when Gun raided the Ark, so he was simply not wise enough to know that his mission was actually evil. In short, Shadow's character wasn't just Bad Sonic, or the edgy serious character there to make the story hardcore. He was to add depth to the story, and further show the mind class of the two points of view of the situation of the game, which was good and evil. As we know, in the end, Shadow leans to the good side and helps Sonic end the intention of his creator, who wanted to destroy the planet for Maria's death. This shows that the ultimate theme of Sonic Adventure 2 in the long run was forgiveness. You see, Shadow has always been seen as a finish the mission character, where he thinks that he has to do everything necessary at all costs to fulfill the mission. If the mission is something evil, it makes sense that people tended to think he was the bad guy, but notice how quick of a change Shadow can change. He didn't change his mind so quickly because his character was too shallow or he was written badly. It's just a result of he was too young and naive to even know what exactly was going on and at the time and he was also lacking some important information. And sadly, even after forgiving and learning the morals that Shadow learned, in the process of trying to make things right, Shadow dies, ending the character and his story and apparently that's all we see of him. Or so one would think. Shadow returns in Sonic Heroes. Why? The common story is that Shadow was so popular people wanted him back. I mean, he was such a different character that it left that big of an impact on people. So what was he like in this game? Sonic Heroes was a game where the seriousness level was nowhere near as high as Sonic Adventure 2. But Shadow probably provided the deepest moments of the game. You see, Shadow has amnesia and can't remember the events of Sonic Adventure 2, or 
anything about who he is or what he's supposed to be doing. Heck, the first thing he does is save Rouge from Omega despite having no memory of her. It just made sense to him to save an innocent person. His shrouded vision and search for answers is what distinguishes him and the rest for team of Team Dark and shows just how deep their own quest is. You know, it has more meaning in compared to other teams, especially when you look at Shadow himself. Even though Shadow had little purpose, he ended up helping Sonic and his friends defeat Metal Sonic, with Omega and him being the ones last seen with his body. So what comes next? Shadow the Hedgehog. If Shadow was an important character, why does he have his own game now? He has this game, because at this point everyone is interested in Shadow. People want to know more on his story, and want the final links to his past so his amnesia can rest. They want all those hinted questions answered. It's a good move, as Shadow's amnesia had been a plot point and it didn't feel right to some people. It's probably because it was used in like at least three games that had little to no continuity, which was Sonic Heroes, Sonic Battle, and Shadow the Hedgehog itself. It almost felt like the story got reset every time it was mentioned. However, Shadow's game ended up being a lot more complicated. For starters, we have the numerous game paths and different end results that Shadow can choose from. We don't have a canon path, so we don't have a complete grasp on who Shadow is like. From the early cutscenes that we do know are canon, Shadow is seen as not even acknowledging the invasion of the Black Arms and out of nowhere invading alien race leaving that crisis to Sonic and his friends. Shadow's only goal is to learn his past, and from what we gather from all cutscenes, he'll learn his path at all costs necessary. And Shadow's commitment to his path is what stands him out in this game. Even if learning he's evil, he'll immediately go that path. But he's never extremely evil or super good. Heck, none of the paths have a real canon, so you can't judge him using any of them. That's why you can't use this game to judge him as a violent, crazy, merciless, dark, edgy character. Shadow in the non-canon parts of the game is made to reflect the choices of the player, not Shadow's own choices. You can only really judge him based on the actions he pulls on the final story. In the final story, Shadow learns that Black Doom helped Gerald to create Shadow. However, after Shadow learns that, he doesn't suddenly feel any loyalty to Black Doom. He learned what he needed and he decided to defeat the Black Arms as the villains they are. The world seemed to hate Shadow. Humans were against him, he remembered how they wronged him, but didn't remember that he decided to forgive them. It looked like Shadow didn't belong. Black Doom revealed to Shadow that they shared blood, but still, Shadow chose to oppose him anyway. That is, I think, something that describes his real character. That is an evolution of a character. But even after that, Shadow still sticks around. Shadow's story is literally at an end. He has learned about his past, he has fulfilled Maria's wish in the long run, and he defeated his creator. He now has a future to choose for himself. But the question is, what is that future? The first game that attempts to answer this is Sonic 06. In this game, Shadow is now a gun agent. Wait, what? Gun was the organization that ordered the raid that killed Maria. Why would he now work with them? Like I said, he did let go of the past. He really forgave humans for real then. He now believes that Gun are the good guys, that's what we are supposed to believe, right? The bad guys in Gun lived 50 years ago, and the current Gun General realized that his hatred for Shadow was a big misunderstanding. Uh, but anyway, Shadow is now more of the cool, badass agent type in the beginning, where Gun has Shadow clash with Eggman, who always has been an ally and an enemy of Shadow at the same time. Shadow seems to respect Eggman enough to always call him Doctor. He still has a deep bond with Rouge and Omega, so he isn't completely emotionless. He does care about them. Heck, he even cares about the events in the story a lot more than Sonic, even though some of those events don't concern him. Examples being him saving Sonic from Silver, 
or going the way to help eliminate Mephilus the Dark, Shadow is very involved in the events of Sonic 06 and doesn't search for his own path or his own way. I mean, his own path is over. Heck, his perspective of the 06 events are deeper and more meaningful than Sonic's. He now sees that he should continue to help the planet strive. This was actually an okay way of continuing his story, despite some feelings of his appearances just being shoo-ins. Shadow has a role. He cares about the events. He doesn't rely on his own story to proceed. So he ends up being a lot more successful in Sonic 06 than a lot of other characters. If Shadow ever did do something evil, like he does in the spinoff sometimes, Maybe it was due to the Black Arms DNA within him, but he proves time and time again that he is strong-willed enough to not give in to it. He showed that he is truly selfless. It's obvious that he's no villain, so calling him an anti-hero is kind of not accurate either. The best term I could think for him is maybe tragic hero or something along the lines of that. But it's after that that you begin to see something different in his appearances. He appears in spin-offs such as the two first Sonic Riders games, but he has no story significance, alright? In Sonic Chronicles, Shadow has an even tamer story where he is simply out for the goal of finding Omega and not caring for the game's events in themselves. But why? I thought Shadow wanted to protect Earth or whatever planet it is. But now he doesn't care for anyone but a chosen friend, and not even Rouge. That's not the only game either. As we jump into the modern era of Sonic, Shadow has multiple personality switches. In Sonic Colors DS, he pops in every now and then claiming he's making sure Sonic is strong enough to take on Eggman, and there's a mission where you have to assist him in fighting egg pawns. Why does this sound familiar, a character being downgraded weak? But anyway, it's even more interesting what they do to him in Sonic Freeriders. In this game, Shadow and Ruse entered the tournament to win the cash prize. You would think Shadow would have a reason for truly entering this, I mean, why would he waste his time with the tournament? Wait. Shadow entered this tournament to get money? Shadow wants money? What would Shadow do with money? I mean, why is he all of a sudden greedy like Rouge? He cares for her, yes, but how has he adopted her trait like that? Shadow would never be self-centered like this, especially for money. That doesn't even make sense in terms of the misconception that he is aggressive character who is just emo and evil and that doesn't even make sense there. Nothing in Shadow's history has ever indicated that he's only wanted money and is greedy like that. I mean, that kind of character is just not who Shadow is. Well, maybe Sonic Generations, the 20th anniversary game, would do Shadow more justice. He is a rival, but he has no involvement in the story. Why does he fight Sonic? Most likely, he has no reason. Sonic just went back in time to relieve his previous confrontation with Shadow. So Shadow basically has no role in this game, other than being a memory of past events. His appearance in the end of the game is just as pointless as the appearance of all the other characters. It seems the writers love to put Shadow in circumstances where he just needs to fight Sonic, just for the heck of it. They can no longer find any good example why he should do it, they just make him do it. No reason seems to be the best reason for them. Shadow's later appearances in games like these also feel like he's just there for fan service. He has almost no story purpose in some of these games, and it feels like he's fighting just to look cool. But where is his in interesting death? You know, the character that he originally had. For example, in Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, Shadow interrupts Sonic's quest out of nowhere, and claims that Sonic's reliance on his friends makes him weak, and decides to challenge him for no reason. Shadow of all people mocks friendship? Shadow, who in his prime demonstrated that his loyalty for his friends suppressed loyalty for any other character, he was always nicer to his friends even than Sonic sometimes. Sonic used to playfully tease some of his friends in the old games, while Shadow only teased his enemies. Now in Boom, 
Sonic is a complete jerk. That's why this quote from Shadow feels even more out of place. What sense it makes for Shadow to mock Sonic for having friends, while Sonic is busy literally telling to his friends that he doesn't need them. Shadow's last appearance is in the game's ending, where it seems more like he acts like he was monitoring Sonic's quest than wanting to stop it. Like, why was he there then? What does he want? He has no introduction, and he has nothing explained about him. It doesn't make you interested in him, it just leaves you feeling like you missed something. Well, Shadow was labeled by Stephen Frost, Sonic Boom's lead developer, as the fan-favorite character, being there simply because fans like him. That's the problem. Shadow was never meant to be a fan service character. He was meant to be the character that got you thinking. He was supposed to be deep, and just throwing him with switching personalities isn't doing him justice at all. And even if you look at it from a new audience perspective, they know nothing about him. And when he is introduced in this scene, they will learn only his name from his lines, and they learn that he is a bad guy to Sonic because, well, he's challenging Sonic for no reason. But he isn't a villain to Sonic at all. Seriously, if they wanted to introduce Shadow to new people, why did they do it like this? Wouldn't it be more reasonable for new people to hate the Sonic Boom version of Shadow? Because Shadow was on Sonic's side. The only time he really went evil was when he didn't know what he was doing. So who would like a character like Shadow and Boom where he just wants to be evil for no reason explained? I don't know why people think Shadow can't be written in any new Sonic story today. The problem isn't that Shadow's personal story is over, it's that it's like the writers can't figure out what to do with him. They don't know what to, you know, how to fit him into the later stories. So how can they fix him? I think that Shadow is not a special case in terms of fixing Sonic characters in general. Fix him the same way like all other Sonic characters. For starters, one thing he needs is a good story for him to appear in. A story that portrays his character in a meaningful way. People love Shadow because of his history and his character that was established in the past. They can't like him anymore when he is just a cardboard cutout of himself. No character in existence would be liked only for the act of appearing. If you notice by how I went about analyzing this, you probably noticed that I analyzed his character well up until 06. But after that, I kinda just gave up. Well, it's because after Sonic 06, his character just kept declining and became unlikable and inconsistent. It would make sense to bring his old self again to get back in time in his character development after 06. This choice would make sense for multiple reasons. Well, for starters, his old character was proven to work when the game had a deep story. The new games don't even have deep stories for him, as well as other characters, so he fits in horribly. Another thing is Shadow fans built up back then in those games. That means that he was liked for his appearances in those games. And his character was consistent. He didn't just switch personalities with each game. There is no other way to have a successful concept with him. Shadow is just food for his haters nowadays. Old fans are disappointed and revolted whenever they see him, and there are no new fans of him if you don't count fans who like him because they can laugh at him. So with that, that's pretty much the analysis for what Shadow can become. How can they fix this in a way? I leave that up to Sega. And with that, we finish our character analysis of Shadow the Hedgehog. Next time, we will cover another character in the same format. Be sure to let us know what you think. Spread the true Sonic spirit. This is Nux here, signing out. And one more thing, be sure to tell us in the comments below who you want to be analyzed next. Later.